Okay. Thank you. Right, well, uh, yeah, my name is Ben Ryan. I'm the technical officer for Timescapes. Uh, Timescapes, I'm going to talk about the Next Generation Archive. Now, one caveat to that is there won't be a Next Generation Archive. We were initially funded for 10 years, but unfortunately that was in two tranches. The first five years ends January 2012. We're not having a second tranche of funding, unfortunately. So, what we're going to achieve by the end of January 2012 it's a proof of concept of certain areas. What we have at the moment is a repository and an archive based on a product called Digital. The reason we got that is that it was hosted at Leeds University. They use it for their collections. This was decided when the project first came online, 2007. I was in post-2008. It made sense at that time. They didn't have something imposed to go with what they got. Supported, it's backed up. It's got institutional backing as well. Okay. Right, as we say, this is the problem. The main problem with digital is a great content management system for what it does. It just treats everything as a digital object. It doesn't allow the modelling of complex relationships and information and the interrelationships. This is crucial because Timescapes has got, it's a study with nine projects. Several of them are empirical. Social science research across the life course from very early age to the oldest generation. Okay. We've got seven projects, but also we've got cross-cutting themes across these seven projects. So we're going from through the age, through the life course, but across on special research topics across. We've got two other projects, the archiving project, and one called secondary analysis. Secondary analysis is a thing being pushed by the ESRC because primary research is very expensive in the field. So they want, there's a big body out there. They want people to go back and look at this data, reanalyze it and do secondary analysis. This is the reason for the archive. So we're actually conducting research projects, archiving, and doing secondary analysis all at the same time. Probably one of the first times a social science project has tried to do this. So in one sense, it's very experimental. We've clearly seen the problem with digital is that when we were trying to do secondary analysis, we can't look at these interrelationships and constructs that we want to see. So the idea was that about 18 months ago, we'd start looking at what technologies were available to us all open source, that we could put together archives specifically designed for social science and particularly qualitative longitudinal research. This has particular elements on it because we're looking over time. We're building up relationships over time that build and grow. Now, what we chose was Fedora. The reason we chose this is because... It's got a thing called a content model architecture. It's very important to us that we can be extremely flexible. In Timescapes, we have concepts of projects, waves, cases, things like that. Other social science projects have different sort of constructs, okay? So we need a very flexible architecture that we can build these relationships and concepts directly. So when a researcher comes to do and look at an archive, they see concepts that are relevant to their field in social science, and it's quite a wild field. Also... Services in Fedora are an extremely important thing. They allow us to disseminate various views of this repository and this archive using these constructs and relationships that we have in there. So we can build it. So underneath all of this is Fedora. Extremely flexible, but it doesn't really give us much in terms of a full archive or a full repository. So we've got to think of how we're going to do this. So our base model is on Fedora. What it allows us to do is create these content models. So for each data object that we hold, instead of in digital a data object just being one digital object, we can say, right, we've got metadata, we've got an interview in various formats. We also might have different types of interview. Some of it might be fully anonymized, fully redacted. Some of it might be actually raw data. Within our access control systems, we do currently allow different levels of access. So some will actually have 
access to the raw interviews, okay, and that's by the principal investigator and the team deciding that this person is properly you know, authorised to do that sort of thing. So we need a flexible content model that we can rely on. We also need to link data objects. And one of the things we use with Fedora is got a thing called triple store Mulgara. Effectively, it's subject relation object with a predicate in the middle. Okay? We can use this and say, I don't know if you're familiar with DDI, Documentation Initiative, variables and variable references. We can represent these directly as concepts within the Fedora system. We can also create our own ontologies, and this is extremely important to what we're doing. Okay? So here we can have PDF is dissemination of an RTF. That's a fairly simple one. But also we can have literal relationships, like Albert has gender male. It gives us an extremely flexible way of building our structures. So in terms of other repositories, you generally have a fairly limited set of structures that you can build. Here, it's all built on RDF triple stores. That is the way we structure information in our archive and repository. The way we use these relationships, this is an example of the current state of our archives. This is one for timescapes. And one of the things you hear, see here, we have the archive, we have a project. This is men as fathers. This project looks as fatherhood. So the people are interviewed before they become fathers, during the pregnancy, obviously of their partner, and afterwards, so it's over time. So they're looking at key transition points through the life course. So we have wave two, and we have a number of cases. So what we do here is we're using these relationships stored in a triple store to build our structure of the view of the data. And this is all generated automatically. We also use relationships to aggregate data. In this case, we have this case brown, where we can see we've got wave one, two interviews of that. We've got access to metadata. We've also got access to the data files. Now, one of the important things about using relationships is we can create different views Okay? We effectively ask the object or the aggregate thing, display yourself to me. We might put parameters to it to say to do that. Now these services, okay, these are the crucial part. What it allows us to do is produce views, relationships. Okay? We've seen them on the previous side. That is just one set and that is for project wave and case, which is fundamental to Timescape's way of looking at things. It may not be fundamental to another um, study's way of doing things. Okay? But we, what we're doing in Timescapes is we're displaying exactly the constructs that researchers expect. They understand about waves. They've done them. You know, other cases, um, other projects don't work in that way. But because we've got services, the base data can then be presented in the most flexible way and the most appropriate way for the researcher that's trying to actually go into that. Okay? Also, we say we can pass parameters. One of the things we want to do is also with login ID. It might be that you're a registered user in terms of Tilescapes. That means you have access to all you know, anonymized data within a certain set. But also, there's a thing called approved or case by case access, where a research team might say, okay, this person in another institution has shown their bona fides, they can access our data. Okay? So, we might want to show different views of the data depending on who's logged in or different um, parameters that we pass. So it gives us flexibility in telling the object, give me a view, but here's some parameters, and you decide what the view should change. Okay? So we get flexibility in our system. This allows us to also do things like different types, such as DDI and QDEX. Now, QDEX is a DD Alliance working group trying to come up with a new qualitative longitudinal sort of standard that will fit within the document data initiative. Okay? So it's at early stages, but at the moment, DDI is great, are describing top-level da data sets. But when it comes to qualitative long data, we want to get inside the data. It's very important that we look at interview. We want to look at concepts at various stages of annotations, memos that researchers have put on these things. We don't just look at a document or an interview as one digital object. It doesn't work. It's great looking at it in terms of waves, phases, and that across projects. But ultimately, we want to be able to link internally conceptually and thematically around the information that we have. So we need this power in the system. One other technology we're using quite extensively is solar. So one of the ideas is we want open source. And at the moment, we've only got myself as a resource to develop this proof of concept. So it's a case of trying to get things off the shelf to fit together, work quickly, so we can get this proof of concept. Solar is great for that. Okay? So we can index. So we've got simple searching, a bit like Google. Simple searching, one or more terms in, 
Search will look for data. We're actually using a thing in Solar called DISMAX. The nice thing about that is whatever someone took, terms they put in, it guarantees that the search will work. It may not give any results, but it will work, okay, because it always sorts out the syntax for you. What that allows us to do is put in a number of predefined searches based on thematics that they're putting in for us, okay. At the moment, we could say choose. We've got 58 metadata elements that we could have. We can say, right, okay, Dismax search will work over six of them. But then we could choose another set of six somewhere else and display them as different searches based on what the researchers tell us they're trying to normally look at. It might be we're interested in fatherhood or you know, pregnancy or death, bereavement, these sort of things. So we can actually build up customised searches very, very quickly because it's a small config, get it running, offer it to the user immediately. We also offer advanced searches. And we can see over here, we've got a number of fields that we've chosen there. These can be chosen dynamically, so we can set them up extremely quickly because of this flexibility in the service model that we've chosen with Fedora. Okay? Because we're asking an object, say, right, what fields have you got? I've got these, and parameterize it that way. We can also add more searches. And what we're doing here, we're using Solar, and we're using JSON and jQuery objects here it's extensively to get search results up quickly. Yeah, this is very, very fast. We've got minimal coding going on here because it's just me doing it. And we've got you know, a reasonable system up and working within about six months while I've got all my other duties to do. It's a very fast way of building a nice system. Okay. Now, one of the things we also wanted to do is bring in fasted browsing. And here we're using the outputs from the MIT SUNY projects exhibits. Okay? And what we've done is you do a search you get 593 items. You've seen tag clouds. That's great. You click on that, you reduce the set down. What we've also done is push that back to Solara because we can do faceted searches in Solara as well. Once we know what the facet is, we just call a search. So we're using flexibility of searching and browsing both at the same time. You go back and forth, back and forth. So far, people have come, responded very positively to this sort of idea that they can browse around search rather than just the normal searching of doing it. Once we allow them to actually get in and search code structures and internally, then it becomes even more powerful because this is the way they work. They generally troll through, browse, read, link to things like that. Now, another reason for choosing Fedora is it's got XAML. Okay? Some of you are familiar with it, an extensible actual control markup language, but it's very important for our work that we protect our data. Some of our data is extremely sensitive. We've got stuff that could probably, you know, criminal um, investigations, libel, okay? And all this is based on very, very informed consent, okay? So we've got huge ethical considerations about who gets access to this data, especially in its raw form, okay? With XAML, the one thing it allows us to do is bring policies from the archive all the way down to data objects, okay? So we could stop access to raw data only through mediated services. And one of the most important points of the way XAML is now implemented in the latest version of Fedora is that it's versioned and managed by Fedora itself. So if we have a change in authentication or access rights, these are versioned and managed as well at the same time. So that gives us a very, very secure and flexible system and also a good audit trail of exactly what we've done as we've moved through the process of allowing, putting data into the archive, allowing access to it, taking that away access to it, and monitoring these things. Right. I thought I'd do it pretty quickly, yeah. Good, that's it. Right. This effectively is the system that we've got. So from ingest, we have a number of XLT transforms. QDEX, Timescapes, DDI, all go to Fedora Mets. In Mets, we have the controller objects, data objects, and that. Now, the one thing about this is I've tried to automate all of this. So at the moment, by annotating the QDEX scheme, we've described what elements we have, I can automatically generate all of the control and data objects that I need to populate a Fedora repository. Okay? So at the moment, it takes me about two hours to build a repository and populate it okay? with default views, as we saw these hierarchical models. That's one of the things about it. We've got Fessel. This is the Fedora thing that uses XAML. We've got LDAP. We use LDAP. Open source, very nice. Thank you very much. Mulgara. Exhibits. Solara. Lucin. 
plugin called G-Search that manages all of the Fedora updates for us if we enter a new object based on configurations. It puts in the Lucene index for us automatically. The whole thing is glued together by a very, very lightweight PHP web app. There you go. Hello. Um, can you uh, can you explain a bit about the the sort of benefits that you've seen? For, you you, dis, you discussed the you know subject um, predicate object kind of um, semantic web type model. Um, often people you know sort of talk about the fact that that can't really comes into its own when you when you're doing interoperability between large numbers of systems. Now here you've had one system that you're. You're, you're kind of completely in control of. So presumably you could have, instead of having triples, you could have just had some relational database work going on in there. Um, but you know, sort of where, can you explain the kind of the flexibility that, you, that you've got that you wouldn't have got from, you know, sort of from the, um, from the other technologies? Um, it's generally because Moldora is integrated with Fedora for us. So we've got that as a basis. We're trying to do off the shelf we can do um, flexibility in terms of generic ontologies, like each collection is part of, you know, is, you know, there's that. Yes, you're quite right, we're using it in a specific way, and we're not using it in, in, in terms of that interoperable way, because we're trying to achieve a particular goal. We're using the flexibility of the RDF to do all our structural parts. In that sense, we're not trying to sort of look at one structure, compare it to another structure over there. Potentially, I think we could move into that, but that's too wide a scope at present. That the um, ESRCs archiving, data archiving, and you know, sort of, or, or, uh, would be, would kind of benefit from this. That you'd you'd be infecting the rest of the you know, sort of the, the, the national corpus, as it were. We've been working very closely with the UKDA, which we are using as our preservation system. Yeah, the archive hosts leads pres preserved at UKDA, but we have been working very closely with the UKDA about the use of these technologies. My line manager happens to work for UKDA and is part of Timescape, so there's very close, and ERCC are very aware of what we're doing here. So yes, there is um, you know, that connection, and it has been ongoing for at least three years.